For many projects, an initial top-down estimation will be made to determine if the project is feasible. Then, once the project has been given the go-ahead, a detailed bottom-up estimate will be made in order to determine a detailed project schedule and time phase budget. This video will review four bottom-up or micro estimation techniques used in project management. Single point estimation, three point estimates, multiple estimators, and the Delphi technique. There are some general guidelines when estimates are being made for project management. These are have people familiar with the tasks make the estimate, use several people to make estimates, all estimates should be based on normal conditions, efficient methods, and a normal level of resources. Use consistent time units in estimating task times. Treat each task as independent. Don't aggregate the tasks together. Don't make allowances for contingencies. In other words, the estimators should not pad their estimates. Adding a risk assessment helps avoid surprises to stakeholders. So once estimates have been collected, we can analyze the risk inherent in those estimates. A single point estimate is the easiest estimate to obtain and understand. We simply ask an estimator to provide a value for how long a particular task or activity will take to complete. The problem with this is the estimator may have other information or may suspect other things based on their expert judgment, such as how long it would take if things don't go well. So what we want to do is be able to get at that information as well. We do that through what's known as three-point estimates. In this case, we ask the estimator to provide three different estimates. One, an optimistic estimate. If everything goes perfectly well, what is the duration we suspect we could get this done in? What is the pessimistic, so at the other end of the spectrum here, if things uh, all go poorly, how long do we think it take, might take to get this task completed? And then finally, the most likely. So based on their expert judgment, what is the most likely time that this task will be done in? Now we could take these three values and do a simple average or a triangular distribution and come up with some value. The problem with computing a simple average is that we are not weighting heavily enough the opinion of our estimator on what is the most likely time period in which this task will be completed. So in project management we often use something called TE or the weighted average activity time. In this case we are weighting more heavily that average activity time represented by M in our calculations. So if we go back and do this calculation again, we found, find that TE is in fact at 33 days. Okay, so that's how we do that in project management, usually with three-point estimates, is we're not going to do a simple average, we're going to do this calculation for TE. TE follows a beta distribution. And so once we actually look at the probabilities of a task or an entire project being done within that TE time, we'll find that um, it is lying in the middle of the probabilities. So therefore, there's probably about a 50% chance that our project will be completed within 33 days. Using TE provides some additional advantages if we want to actually look at the probability of our task being completed within the TE time or the entire project being completed uh, within the time that we have estimated. So a PERT analysis will actually allow us to determine that if we have an estimated project duration of uh, 243 days as determined by our TE values, we can then ask questions about what is the probability that we will be done within a certain number of days. So what a PERT analysis can do is take into uh, account the variability in these estimates and provide us with some estimation of the amount of risk that our estimates contain. We can also ask multiple estimators to provide us with an estimate 
of how long it will take for a particular activity or work package to be completed. We can then take those values and we can perform a simple average on those values. We could also ask our three estimators for a three-point estimate and we could then calculate an average TE uh, based on those estimations as well. If we do have multiple estimators though, there is another technique that can be used to try to drive those estimators toward a more accurate and uh, more consensus-based estimate. This is known as the Delphi technique. It derives its name from the ancient Greek oracle, oracle at Delphi who predicted the future. Um, the oracle was not ever seen and remained anonymous to people receiving the predictions. So the Delphi technique involves getting the estimates from our estimators, letting them see each other's responses and estimates, but keeping that information about who, who made that estimate anonymous, and then letting them submit one or more rounds of estimates. So we continue to go on uh, for however long it takes to either come to a complete consensus or to at least narrow the variability in those estimates. So that's a quick summary of the four main bottom-up estimation techniques used in project management.